Halloween in horror. Served chilled. Shock tales. Just back from playing b-ball. And by b-ball, I mean beer ball. It's our power bottom. I mean, I mean uh, our power forward, Johnny Thunder. What's up? Well, that's funny. I think you just came back from playing pickleball, right? But it's like your it's self pickleball. Yeah, it's um, uh, yeah. I, I, I thought I thought it was one thing, and it turned out it was another. But anyway, so what special are we serving up today, genius? So you you sent me three screeners, right? And which one out of the three that did you know that I was going to watch? Well, I kind of surmised it would be Pillow Party Massacre. <laughs> Two years after a tragic April Fool's prank, a group of friends returned to their childhood vacation home to reconnect and heal old wounds. As strange things begin to happen and girls turn up missing, it's clear that someone or something is out for revenge. Um, this is obviously a throwback to classic 80s slasher films. And as we said, it's called Pillow Party Massacre. So you know what? I'm going to turn it over to you this time since, you know, I know pillow parties and girls tickling each other in lingerie is near and dear to your heart. So why don't you take the reins on this one? Okay. I'll, I'll just uh, give you a couple of my thoughts. My thoughts. What's the matter with you? I'm trying to think, but nothing happens. Uh, about halfway through the movie, I'm, I'm just, I'm just starting to realize. I'm like, wait a minute. I'm halfway through this movie. There's still no pillow party, and or massacre to be found <laughs> anywhere. And I was like, and I, just when I started to kind of get a little pissed off, like, what the, what the f? Then my prayers were answered. Just minutes later from from that thought, my <laughs> prayers were answered, and a pillow party ensued. There we I go. Even in like, slow motion. Yes, very nice. Feathers everywhere. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Just there was there seemed to be like an, an abundance of uh, kind of useless dialogue in this. They were uh, kind of like our show. Bingo. You know, they were trying to build the build the characters. I just the actor the, the, the actors were fine. Like actually, were a step up from Don't Fuck in the Woods, which you know, uh, <laughs> except. For, ex- Except for maybe Mrs. Fisher at the very end, which I was like, Oish, yikes. Anyway, um, but the problem is that I didn't find them any, they were really that engaging. They were just kind of like these like 30 year olds playing teenage girls, <laughs> trying to be the vapid teenage girls. Uh, I don't, was that, were they supposed to be in high school or college? I didn't, I, I was assuming it was high school. Well, that they was, were in high school. That was the prom, then, right? Okay. Yeah, that was the, that was the pre, uh, that was the original story. And then after everything happened two years later, uh, it was only two years later, which they yes. would have been technically in college 20, or yeah. community college. I, I didn't really care <laughs> if they were sliced and diced with a Ginsu <laughs> knife. I just didn't really, you know, like I said, I didn't really care too much about the characters, so to speak. Yeah, one thing I do really like is that they were uh, they were able to get the producer's nephew's cure tribute band uh, to do the score, <laughs> and I thought that was and it like a little '80s vibe to it. They get an A for effort for just going all out and going for it. I think there was some things to really like about this movie, um, based on especially I mean what their budget was. You know, I mean their special effects for some of the kills were. You know, they could have gotten Ed Gannon in there to maybe uh, kick it up a notch, possibly. <laughs> but uh, uh, like I say, I, there was some things to definitely like about it. Um, and I didn't hate it. I actually kind of enjoyed it a bit. Yeah, you know, I actually I think I might have liked it a little bit better than you, just in the sense that it really was just a complete throwback um, two classic 80s slashers. There's nothing new here. It's not reinventing the wheel. You've seen everything you've seen here before many, many times. And in fact, there's, I think, a Halloween uh, uh, homage. Um, you definitely get a Friday the 13th kind of vibe. My biggest thing was that they kind of telegraph exactly who the killer was way early in the film um, with with mention twice, I think, of like a throwaway character. So that was kind of obvious. But yeah, I, I, I wouldn't be angry again if I watched this maybe for 99 cents or for free. Um, but, it you know, it was it was OK. But uh, it's 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 better than some things I've seen. I wouldn't go out of my way to see it. But if you catch it for free, I don't think you'd be angry. I'm going now. Heaven help you. Please subscribe, like, comment and share before leaving the bar. 
cost you nothing, but it's a huge help.